you better get ready. 2022, the year of God's orchestrated divine breakthrough for your life. For you to dare to be all God called you to be, the first thing is you have to be a dreamer. Talk to people that don't dream. You have to dream. Dream about a better future. Dream about better days and more pace. Amen. In Jesus' name. Dream the impossible dream. Dream that you can do great things. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper. The editor said, lack of imagination. Can you imagine that? Because his dream was to put a smile on a child's face. And he had to face somebody who never saw his potential, never understood, but he never died to the dream. So everybody must dream. Every child has a dream. Every adult must have a dream. Everybody is free to dream. Dreaming will cost you nothing. Oh, I dream about a better place. I dream to be married one day. I dream for Prince Handsome to come or Prince Charming to come. I dream of an ideal job. I dream of a church building. I dream to own a farm or to own a piece of land one day. I dream that God can do great things. I dream to be out of this prison. I dream that one day we're not just going to have bread and tomato sauce. We are actually going to be able to give our children a proper a meal. I dream. I dream about a better future for South Africa. I dream that the giants will not prevail. I dream that this rainbow nation will be a blessed land. Come on, is somebody in agreement? Matthew 18, whatever two or three agree on us, touching anything on earth shall be done. I dream about the day that there will not be unemployment. I dream about the day where young people will have two, three, four options for jobs. They don't have to go to Canada, America, um, New Zealand, Australia. They will have ample jobs here in South Africa. I dream that those who left the country will come back and rebuild South Africa. Come on. In Jesus' name, if you lose your dream, you will perish. Because Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. You have to dream. And Satan will do everything in his power to steal your dream. And that's the deal. The more you focus on the giants, the more you lose your dream and your hope. The more you look at the giants and the impossibilities, the more those giants begin to invite you and, invade you and stifle you. And kill your dream. Because Satan is a stealer of dreams. What is the dream that you used to dream? What is the dream that you've abandoned? And Joseph could have. After his brothers betrayed him. After he's sold as a slave. After he finds himself in part of his house and he's lied about. After he's in prison and he's abandoned again. He could have lost his dream, but he never did. Because he held on to his God and he held on to his dream. And I want to tell you tonight, hold on to your dream. No matter what you've gone through, you hold on to your dream. You hold on to your vision. You hold on to the promise of God. Because God is able to fulfill his dream, his vision in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, say amen, someone in, this, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt said the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Well, Disney, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. So your dream will determine who you become. The quality of your dream will determine the quality of the individual that you will become. Because if you have no dream, you don't have to change. But if you have a dream of greatness, you have to become great in the present. You have to become great in Potiphar's house because you have a dream of greatness. First you dream and that dream gets a hold of you and that dream begins to change you. That dream begins to enlarge you in Jesus' name. We need to take the blinkers off. Amen. We've taken the masks off. Now we have to take the blinkers off and we have to lift our eyes and we have to see what God says is possible in this world and in our lives. Nothing is impossible with God. When Abram went through a time of doubt and he has a conversation with God in Genesis 15, the Bible says in verse 1, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. 
But Abram said, Lord, what will you give me? You know, it's okay to believe God for progress. It's okay to have healthy ambition to get ahead in life. Not selfish, but healthy. It's okay to believe God for great things. Says, what will you give me? Seeing I have nothing. I go childless. And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. So he's in a bad place. He's got a promise. He loses sight of the promise. And he begins to talk to God about his natural circumstances. And he says, look God where I am. Look God, nothing is happening. Believing God for a child, I still am not pregnant. Look God, I'm leaving you for a job, but I still don't have a job. He says, you've given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. Hallelujah. And I, the word of the Lord's coming to you tonight, my brother and sister. This one shall not be your heir. You will not stay where you are no more. You better, you better uh, 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 get your ten pegs out. You better get ready to move in Jesus' name. You better get ready to relocate. You better get ready to go higher. You better get ready to go from camping to climbing. Shout amen in Jesus' name. The word of the Lord comes to him and he says, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and now God says, Look, get a vision. Look now. Not next year. Look from the place where you are. Lift your eyes above the trouble, above the storm, above the giants, above the impossibilities. Lift your eyes and see the fields. Lift your eyes and see. Look toward the heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said, so shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord and it accounted him for righteousness. When Jesus calls the disciples, I mean, think about this. If you've ever been to Israel, it's a small country, Nazareth, where Jesus grew up and spent time for 30 years is smaller than the half our church property. Maybe that whole village or place Jesus grew up in is not even the size of our building. Factual, if you've been there. But somehow Jesus there got a vision that He's going to change the whole wide world. And He started with this vision, with this mission, with this assignment, because He had heard from His Father and He had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and everything began to change as it should when we are filled with the Holy Ghost. And he began to call people and say, follow me and I will make you ordinary people. I'm going to turn you into somebody extraordinary. I'm going to turn you into a history maker. I'm going to turn you into a world shaker. I'm going to enlarge your boundaries. I'm going to extend your horizons. I'm going to take you from a place that people don't even know about and I'm going to take it to the nations of the world. Follow me and I will make you. I know the average conversation in the average home is, well, don't get your hopes too high or don't believe God for too much or it's called false hope. Not when God is in the equation because when God comes into the equation, the creator of the universe steps into your life. The one who has all power and all resources. When you give your life to Jesus, then Jesus steps into you and he says, I'm going to make you. And you become a work in progress. He begins to change you inside out. That's why it's not an overnight journey. He begins to enlarge you. He begins to purify you. He begins to sanctify you. He begins to wash you. He begins to renew your mind so that you can think different thoughts. Not thoughts that always take you down, but thoughts that will lift you up. So he tells those disciples, follow me. And he walks with them for three and a half years. Imagine if you see the conversation of Jesus with the disciples, with the crowds, he was very gracious. With the Pharisees, not. The disciples, he was very, very, very intentional. And he rebuked them often. Why? Because he needed them to become the kind of people that would change the world. So he could not allow them to stay where they are, were. In fear, in doubt, 
in unbelief, small-mindedness, intimidated by the environment because he knew what they needed to be for them to fulfill the vision that he called them to fulfill. So he worked on them. And again and again, he rebukes them for their unbelief. He rebukes them for their doubt. He commands them to go further. He stretches them all the time. He enlarges them all the time. And if that is not enough, without social media and without a ball around globe, because they thought the world was flat in those days, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations. I mean, you talk about a big vision. No television. No CNN. No even understanding what lies beyond Israel, Egypt, the known world. So they had to climb on a boat and travel to different nations and preach the gospel. But one thing they did is they were unstoppable because they walked with the master and time spent in the presence of Jesus enlarged them, stretched them, and build something in them that they believed that nothing was impossible. All the persecution, all the opposition in the world could not stop them because they had encountered the master himself and they became, as the Bible says, his workmanship created for good works. Let me tell you something tonight. God's dream for your life is much greater than you can ever imagine. God's plan for your life is much bigger than you can ever imagine. God's belief in you is much more than you can ever imagine. Why would you go through life and always minimize yourself and talk down on yourself and belittle yourself and choose to be, I don't want to say Joe because we have Joe here tonight, and choose to be uh, Mr. Average. Why would you confine yourself to mediocrity, to average, to just fitting in with the norm and the standards of the day. If Jesus himself lives on the inside of you, the same God who created the heavens and the earth, the greater one lives on the inside of you. How can you just be Mr. Normal, Mr. Average, Mr. Nobody? You cannot. Because if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Oh, 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 oh,